previous video, we derived this discrete time dynamic system for the fraction p time t or time plus one as a function of the fraction of newtons at the previous time. Let's recall that p of t is the fraction mutants versus wild type bacteria single population. Okay, so at time t, we had p of t was 0 0.0625. So if we represent this whole population, we say that the number of mutants in this population is a really thin little slice here. Mutants versus my wild type. Pretty thin slice. And then we step through this dynamic system, we found that p at time t plus 1, right, the fraction the next time, 0 0.0816. Still small, but 0 0.02 bigger. Slightly larger slice. Right? So if we were to look at the petri dish, there would be slightly a larger fraction of that petri dish would be covered in mutants versus wild type. So this was a one step of our dynamic. Right, and we saw that both mutants, mutants were going P, the wild type were Bt. Right, we had that Bt plus 1 is 1.5 Bt. And Mt plus 1 blue right, was 2 times Bt. So they were both growing, and then this fraction of how many of the total population is wild type or mutants, that's that's going to change over time as both of these grow bigger and bigger. And we saw that the mutants grow faster, so it makes sense that since the mutants are growing faster, then they're going to take over a larger fraction of the population after one time. Right? The fraction of mutants goes up here because this mutants are growing faster than the wild type. Okay, but then what's going to keep happening? After we keep iterating this model forward in time, right? So let's look for the equilibria of this model. And then maybe if we figure out which one's stable and which one's unstable, we can kind of predict what's going to happen. Right? So if we do if we look for the equilibrium, right? We're looking for where the input is the same as the output. So where p star is equal to 2p star, or 2p star plus 1.5, 1 minus p. Right? This is just p star equals m star. So if I do some algebra here, I'm going to move the denominator over to the left. So p star, 2p star plus 1.5, 1 minus p star is equal to 2p star. Right? right away, I can pick off one equilibrium point. P star equals zero. Right? P star is zero, then the right hand side is zero, and the left hand side is zero. P star on both as a factor. And then I can divide through by P star. Since P star is no longer zero, right? So that gives me two P star plus one point star is equal to two. All right, and then let's do some algebra, right? So I'll make this two minus one point five. Star, 2p star minus 1.5p star plus 1.5 equals it. So then this becomes 0 0.5 star. I'll move 1.5 over to the right. So 2 minus 1.5 gives me 5. And I have 0.5p star is equal to 0.5. So p star is 1. OK, so I have two equilibrium here. Two equilibria points. The plural form. An equilibrium when p star is 0 and when p star is 1. Let's just think about what those mean for draw my fraction. This one. That one, 
So in this case, let's say this is p star equals zero, right? What does our population look like? Well, when p star is zero, right, this is fraction of mutant in my total population, right? So if it's zero, then that means that this whole thing is all wild type only. Right? And there are no mutants. Or the mutants are so small that the fraction is essentially zero. Okay, and then in my other scenario, right, p star one, right, p star is the fraction of mutants. So if the fraction is one, then all of bacteria in this population, all of them are mutant. Right, wild types are are no longer there, or or they're so small that the fraction is basically zero. Okay, so there's these two extremes for our system. There's either only wild types or only mutants. Okay? And so if you think about what's going on here, okay, if we think about this for a second, we can maybe predict which one of these is going to be stable and which one's going to be unstable. Okay, so recall that mt plus 1 was given by 2mt whereas bt plus 1 was given by 1.5 bt, right? So in this case, the mutants grew faster, right? So it makes sense that over time, they take up a larger and larger fraction of the total population, right? If they're growing faster than the wild types, then there will be more of them in the long run. Even though they're both increasing, this one's increasing faster, so eventually there'll be much more than there are of this. Right? It's increasing exponentially, so it's going to be exponentially more mutants than wild type. Take up a larger fraction over it. Larger fraction of the whole population. Right? So what this implies is that this fraction p should go to 1 over time. If you think about what that means in terms of our two equilibrium points, that would mean that p star equals 1 stable, and p star equals 0 is unstable. Right? Because even if we have a small fraction of mutants, then those mutants are going to grow faster and faster and faster, faster than the wild type. So eventually they'll overtake them, and then the fraction will go to 1. So it will leave 0 and go towards 1. Okay, and so let's check this prediction by looking at the cobwebbing diagram. Algebra, right? So here I put that update rule. So I have two x, where x is this fraction piece, divided by two x minus, sorry, two x plus one point five times one minus x. That would be my update rule for pt. I'll start with point zero sixty five because that's what we said the original fraction was. You can see in this graph, in blue I have my update rule. And you can see it's nonlinear because it's not a straight line anymore. I'm curved. In red is the identity line. And so you can see where it intersects the red line is at 0 and at 1. So those are my two equilibrium points that are computed algebraically. And they show up in this graph as well. OK, so let's start at point 0 0.065. We're starting actually pretty close to 0. So if it gets sucked into zero, then that would mean that zero is stable, and, and we did our computations wrong. Our intuition was off. But it, it's not going to. It's going to go up that cobweb through time. It's going to go all the way towards this fraction one. Right? So this fraction of mutants grows larger and larger every time step, and eventually it will get to one. If I start exactly at one, you'll see it's going to stay there for all time, right? If I only have mutants, then I will always only have mutants. Same thing if I start with zero. If I start with zero, I'll always have zero, right? If I have zero mutants to start, I never can get any. Because the way the model is, they have to, you'll have to start with some initial number of mutants in order for the to use. Okay, they're not just like transitioning randomly. They're, they're truly like a distinct kind of population. Okay, and then if I start you know, a little bit more than that, right, like 0 0.06, then I go towards my stable equilibrium. This confirms what we predicted, that 0 is an unstable equilibrium for this system, 
and one is a stable equilibrium. Okay, we'll switch. Uh, okay. So this is for, you know, these particular growth rates. When m was two times, right, the growth rate one was two and the growth rate of the other was 1.5. But in general, we can have different growth rates. Okay. The general model would be yields grow according to rate s and wild type grow according to rate. Right, so then r plus r growth rate. They're just numbers. Okay, so then in this case, we can write down our discrete time system, Tt plus one, right? That's m times Tt plus one over mz plus one plus plus one, right? The fraction of mutants is the number of mutants over the total number of bacteria, right? So then I'll substitute in these expressions for mz and dt. This becomes s and t for s and t plus r. And then we'll do that same trick where we'll divide the numerator and denominator by the same number. So I'll divide them both by the total number. So I get S MT over M divided by S MT over MT plus R ET over MT. Right, so here I just divided both sides, top and bottom, by MT over ET, the total number of bacteria. Okay, and then I can use my expression for pt and 1 minus pt. All right, so then this gives me pt plus 1 is equal to s times, right, the fraction of mutants, pt, divided by s times pt plus r 1 minus pt, because 1 minus pt is the fraction of wild type and t. Okay, so then this is our general model, right, and so it looks very similar to this case that we had here, when we had specific growth rates, r equals 1.5 and s was 2. Right? This has the same form. Okay. And so now that this is kind of in the general form, we can say, you know, there's three basic cases of things that happen here. Right? The first case, case one, is when s is bigger than r, right? Or the mutants grow faster. So that's the case we just had, right? We had 2 was bigger than 1.5, g 2 bigger than 1.5. Okay, that's the model we just had. And in this case, what happens? The mutants grow faster. So um, if the mutants grow faster, then that means that the fraction of mutants in the total population Pt grows to 1, right? If the mutants are growing faster, there'll be more of them over time, and that fraction of the population, who's a mutant and who's not a mutant, is going to go to 1. Okay? So that implies that P star equals 1 is stable, and P star equals 0 is unstable. Right? This is a general, you know, Whenever your mutant growth rate is bigger than your bacteria growth rate, this is always going to happen to this model. The next case asks, okay, what happens if the opposite is true, right? S is less than R, then the wild types grow faster. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's just say we switch those growth rates. So now it'll be, uh, we'll just switch these 1.5, my growth rate mutants, and that'll be less than growth rate 2 for the wild type. We'll switch over to GeoGebra to see what happens. Okay, so if I switch these growth rates, I have to change this model. So this was a growth rate for the uh, wild type, so that'll be 2 now. And then wherever I had a growth rate for the mutants, I'll switch that to 1. 1.x. So now you can see this curve is kind of like sloped the other way, right? But I still have the same equilibrium points at 0, 1. 
But now when I start at 0.65, my fraction goes to zero, right? because I started with uh, some number mu that wasn't zero and it went towards zero. So zero is now stable. If I start near one, let's say I start nine, I move away from fraction one towards zero, right? So even if I started with mostly mutants, the wild types grow faster, so they take over the total population fraction, right? And so then the fraction of mutants goes to zero, since the fraction of wild types is one to one. So it's kind of the opposite of what happens when the mutants grow. Okay. okay so that that example has. Et one is 1.5 plus two one nine. Right, that's the, the example I just did. Okay, and then there's one final case. Right, we did when mutants grow faster, when the wild types grow faster. So then case three says what happens when the growth rates are equal. Both grow. Rate. Right? If they both grow at the same rate, well then the fraction should remain constant, right? If I look at this PT plus one is S or SPT plus R one minus PT. Right, let's do some algebra here. This becomes SP over SPT plus R minus RP. But R and S are equal, so SPT minus RPT gives me just zero R. And then R and S are the same again, so this just gives me TT. So the fraction at time T plus one is the same as the fraction at time T, right? Which makes sense. If they're growing at the same rate, then the fraction of mutants TT remains constant. Okay, and so what does this mean for our equilibria? Right? That means that every fraction P is an equilibrium point, right? By definition of our model now, right? An equilibrium point is when the input matches the output. And since our model is now just PT plus one is equal to PT, then every point matches the output. So every point is an equilibrium point and stability doesn't really make sense or doesn't apply, right? Because it doesn't make sense to um, talk about trajectories that start near an equilibrium point moving towards it or away from it if no trajectories are moving anywhere, right? The fractions are always remaining. So we'll look at this algebra quickly. We'll make these equal, so let's just make this number 1.5. So both S and R are now 1.5 here. When that happens, you can't even see anymore, but the blue line and the red line are in the same place. Right? They're both the identity. So any place I start stays put. Right? If I start with you know, 80% mutants, 20% wild types, well, they're growing at the same rates. They're both increasing in number, and the fraction is remaining constant. So that's kind of the, the general model and all, all the different uh, equilibria that pop out of it. Okay, let's switch back. Do that for a second. Right, this general model for two different types of bacteria with two different growth rates. The fraction grows according to this three time system here. And then there are three things that can happen. Right, if the growth rate of the mutants is faster than the growth rate of the wild types. Then the mutants are going to overtake them and kind of dominate that fraction. The fraction is going to go to one, so one is going to be a stable state, and zero is an unstable state for a fraction of mutants, PT. When the opposite is true, right, when the wild types grow faster, then, uh, oh, I didn't write this down, but what's going to happen is P star equals one becomes unstable now, and P star equals zero is the stable state. Right? Because the wild types are growing faster, they're going to dominate the fraction over time. The fraction of mutants is going to go to zero, which makes zero stable and one unstable. And then when they grow at the same rate, then every fraction 
remains constant. So every point is an equilibrium point and stability doesn't really apply.